Hi friends, the fact that it's time for the end of year book tag is giving me a little bit of a complex. <laughs> but also, I've hated 2024, so I'm ready for it to be over. So let's, let's speed this shit up, you know what I mean? Let's get this shit going. <laughs> It's time for the interview book tag, which is a book tag that I think a lot of us do every single year that is not made to do in December. It's meant to do, I think in like September, October. Ariel Bissett, the creator of the, of the tag, has already done this on her podcast a couple weeks ago. So if, if the creator's done it, I can do it. <laughs> I don't think it's too early. But yeah, today we're gonna be doing the end of your book tag where we talk about what I'm hoping to read the rest of the year, how I'm hoping my reading will go. I think I'm gonna add one of my own questions to this as well, because there's something I wanna talk about that isn't in the tag, but shall we just get into it? Talk about what I'm hoping to read the rest of the year. All my videos are planned for the rest of the year. I actually should probably look at one, one sec. <laughs> I've had a bit of a crazy week and I feel like I don't know what videos I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Oh, I need to sort that out, bloody hell. Okay. Okay, 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 we've got some exciting books coming. <laughs> you naughty, naughty, you teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> yeah, okay, the first question is, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? No. 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 <laughs> I don't do that. This is such an aerial question, because aerial, if you listen to the books on my podcast, just like starts books and then puts them down. That gives me anxiety. There's some of my patrons who talk about how they're reading, currently reading, you know if I'm talking to you by the way, you know, you know, <laughs> who read like seven to ten books at once. I'm like, guys, how? How? I actually heard Lucy Worsley, the the uh, historian non-fiction writer who I really like, talking about this as well, like saying like, have six books on the go and just like, so you always have something you'd be interested in picking up. No. No, 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 no. My Clap if you have anxiety. <laughs> my brain can't handle that. My brain is a one track path. <laughs> it's one track path. I can only read one book at once. Same reason like with, not to talk about Real Housewives again, we've talked about it a lot lately, but like same as I can only watch one franchise at once. I watch one thing at a time, I read one thing at a time, I have a one track mind. So I don't think there's any books I've started this year and not finished that I ever intend, like I've DNF'd a few. I don't think I've DNF'd many. I actually don't track my DNFs. Maybe I should, just on a separate section on my spreadsheet. I think I DNF'd She Who Became The Sun this year. I think I DNF'd but yeah, what else, what else have I DNF'd? I don't know. I'm not finishing Skinny Dipping by Brethany Frankel, which I <laughs> read half of last week and stopped reading. That's never happening. So no, I don't have an answer to this question, Ariel. I'm so sorry. Apologies. <laughs> Let's talk about the question that I wanted to add in, which is how are you doing on your reading goal? Cause I like to live in delusion for most of the year with my reading goal in terms of how on track I am. So on Goodreads, I always set my reading goal to 100 because I like positive reinforcement. So I like being told, oh my God, you're like 25 books ahead of schedule. <laughs> like I love it. I love being told I'm ahead of schedule. Delusion, <laughs> convince yourself. However, I hit 100 books not too long ago. I've read 106 books so far this year. And for my actual reading goal of 150 books, that puts me 13 books behind schedule. So I should have read 119 and I've read 106. Hmm, yeah, yeah. I'm not panicking too much yet. <laughs> I know I could, but I feel like I'm going to read a lot in the last couple months of the year. Oh my God, we're almost on the last two months of the year. 2024, it's your, eh, eh, it's time to get gone. It's time to get gone. Been one of the worst years of my life. Mm. Yeah, I just think 2025 is gonna be a great year. Although I liked the number symmetry of 2024. Can someone give me a reason, please, in the comments why 2025 is good year energy, please? Because even my horoscope told me this wasn't gonna be a good year. So yeah, I'm, so yeah, I'm 13 books behind schedule. I'm not panicking, but also, I don't know if I care that much. <laughs> clap if you care. Clap if you, clap if you care. Here's the thing, last year was the only year, the first year I've ever read 150 books in a year. Before that, I've always averaged between 100 and 150. So like, well, I mean, in the years I've been reading. So like I've always read about 120, 130 the years before that. And you know, if I wanted to, for the stakes, right? For the drama, for like the ongoing narrative that I should be crafting on this channel, I should be like, oh my God, I just have to read 150 books. Like I just really wanna read 150 books. Like I really wanna reach my goal. But 
I just think, you know, I've experienced a lot this year and I just don't know if I give a shit about how many books I read, to be honest with you. I know it's gonna be between 100 and 150, probably close to 150, because I am gonna read quite a few books in the latter parts of the, the part of the year. In fact, I need to kind of get going. I'm doing a video at the moment where someone's given me books to read and they're really long, so blame them. <laughs> but yeah, I just don't know if I... I would love to read 150 books, but I don't know if my joy is, well, I know my joy isn't tied to it. So I should be saying I really care, but I don't really give a shit. I'm okay, I'm okay, there's bigger things in the world. I, as long as I read between 100 and 150 books every year, that's fine, you know, it's not the end of the world. Right, let's get back to the actual book tag questions after I made my own. Do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? I do, so my vlog after the one I'm currently working on, I'm gonna be reading some ooky spooky books, but I don't have set plans for them. It's gonna be decided throughout the video what I'm gonna be reading. I did just read my book club An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson, which I would say is a good autumnal, trend. this is probably my first autumnal transition-y book into the end of the year. And I enjoyed this, but I didn't love it. Uh, it really did a big review for this, but like it was, it was, I mean, I read this after reading the Real Housewives book, so like anything was better than that, you know? But there was aspects of this I really enjoyed, but I also think it could have gone so much further. It felt safe. It felt like all the ideas were there to be a wonderful book, but it felt like it didn't quite actually achieve or shoot for gold in any of them. You know what I mean? But it has a really good, you know, university, Massachusetts, rainy, leaves falling off the trees, vampires, you know. This is a great autumnal transition book. In terms of other books I'm thinking of, I really want to read The Gathering by CJ Tudor in the next month or so. Uh, this is another vampire book. It's set in a small Alaskan town. A boy is murdered. There's a out of state detective who's brought in. It's this small Alaskan town where only 673 people live, but there's a colony of maybe vampires who live outside of the town. And this just sounds so good. CJ Tudor really, I, I, I'm I, very intrigued with this kind of thriller horror hybrid that she's going down. She used to be more of like a traditional thriller author. And with this and The Drift last year, she's going more of a horror slant and it really intrigues me. Everything about this synopsis makes a part of my brain light up. You know what I mean? It makes me go, hoo, 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 like vampires, this small Alaskan town. Like she posted pictures. Maybe I'll try and find them maybe. I think she posted on Instagram, like pictures of a town that she went to for inspo and maybe this is a bit more wintry even but it really really excites me so I really would like to read this and what else what else is kind of autumnal that I'm hoping to read to me murder mysteries are very autumnal for me November is murder mystery month don't ask me why but in my brain November is murder mystery month it's always been that way <laughs> And a murder mystery I've been meaning to read for so long. This one is a little bit more wintry as well, but I suppose, again, it's end of the year. I've been meaning to read this for the whole year, because it's been on TV Cluedo for the whole year, so on February's TV Cluedo, is Hellion Death by Oscar Jensen. This is a Scandi, cosy, country house murder mystery. It's set in a snowstorm, so again, a bit more wintry. This is, just seems like such a classic isolated murder mystery and like I, I want to read it so bad I don't know why I haven't got around to this yet it's just a book that for some reason I've been putting off and putting off but I am so excited I'm so 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 excited you know it's like recommended for fans of Agatha Christie oh oh my god golden age mystery it, oh, it sounds so 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 good so this is really a murder mystery I would really like to prioritize getting to in the latter part of this year what's the next question is there a new release you're still waiting for huh I don't feel like there's a ton because not a lot of books come out at the end of the year. I feel like September there's a landslide of books that come out because that's kind of like from publishing cycles from what I understand is when you want to publish the books you're hoping will be big at Christmas is in September, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but here we go. What have I got coming out in the letter? Oh my god, I've only got three books coming out in the last, <laughs> in the rest of the year. Everyone This Christmas Has a Secret by Benjamin Stevenson, which I am excited. I may be reading that actually by the end of the year. I may be reading that. I've got a video, but I'm not sure actually if I've slotted that in for that or not, because it is the third in the series and I won't have read the second. So that might be a next Christmas thing. I do love reading Christmassy murder mysteries around Christmas. I love it. I love Christmassy murder mysteries. They're so fun. They're so, I love it, I love it. Merry Christmas. Then we have Toto by AJ Hackwith, which I think is like a Wizard of Oz retelling. The true hero of Wizard of Oz takes center stage in this brilliant, delightfully snarky reimagining from the author of Library Unwritten. <gasps> so it's like everything told from Toto's perspective. That one sounds really good. I'm excited for that one. And I did enjoy Library of the Unwritten. 
And then we have Darkly by Marisha Pestle, which I did really enjoy Night Film when I read it this year. Ooh, Darkly's a dark way thriller that dives into the mysterious world of a reclusive game designer, old school board games, and obsessive players. That one sounds really interesting. So they're the only three books that um, I've got on my list that haven't come out yet. And none of them are like, you know, I have to read them by the end of the year, if I'm honest with you. If I had to talk about 2024 releases that I want to read by the end of the year that aren't, like, ones I think will be nominated for the Goodreads Mystery Seller <laughs> category, because <laughs> if we're honest, a lot of them are, I would really like to get to another, this is another murder mystery, but I just keep looking at Seven Lively Suspects by Katie Watson. This is also one that, like, I don't know how many of you care about, because not a lot of people have read this series. It's such an underrated series. This is the Three Dahlia series, which, in my opinion, is one of the best, like, paying homage to the murder mystery genre, cozy murder mystery, not even cozy murder mystery, just murder mystery books that are coming out at the moment, you know, praising golden age crime again, like we talked about. And this is the third book and I would really like to read it. I just keep looking at the cover and I keep going, <gasps> Next question. What are three books you want to read before the end of the year? I just kind of answered this question, but let's carry on. One I've been scared of for the whole year and putting off and putting off and putting off is The Last Murder in the World by Stuart Tatton, okay? I I've just been terrified by it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Petrified. <laughs> Petrified. <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to be nominated for Goodreads Mystery Thriller. I did predict it, but the more... It's, it's tentative. This could be like if I was 25, I'd say yeah, it's gonna be included, but it's skirting the back. And I think it is because I think they're gonna want a speculative one in there. And this is the only one that I think really fits the bill, but this could also not be nominated. And thus, I don't know if I'll read it if it's not nominated. This has had mixed reviews, right? I know Stuart Turton, he swings. You know, he swings hard. I've spoken about the synopsis of this book 10,000 times, but it's the one where there's a island that you know, last people in the world live on, they're protected, but then a scientist is murdered and it triggers the lowering of the protection from the mist that killed the whole world. But then the person who's the murderer has had that wipe from their memory. I mean, it sounds so good. I've heard mixed things, right? I have heard mixed things, but I just love that he swings. So I would really, really like to read this before the end of the year. What else would I really like to read before the end of the year? Let's talk about another one that's been on TBR Cluedo for a long time and I just haven't gone round to. And that is A Curious Beginning by Deanna Ray Bond. This has been on TBR Cluedo since I think like April. And you all want me to read this. You all want me to read it and I keep picking it off. These are actually the books that I should have read a long time ago, but I'm terrified of <laughs> is what we're going through here. I just feel like there's a lot of pressure. So many people have told me I'm gonna love Veronica Speedwell series and I'm just scared. You know, I should, it's Victorian, it's, you know, mystery, it's everything I love. It's everything I love, but I just feel, I feel a lot of pressure around <laughs> I feel really, really scared. But I am, I'm gonna make a promise to you now, I am going to read A Curious Beginning before the end of the year. I'm going to do it. It would have to be a promise. A prom. And when you prom, what's prom? Half a prom. Okay, since my reading is going to be a lot of the Goodreads Mystery Thriller Choice Awards, I always say the wrong word, whatever, that category. Let me say one that I'm pretty, like I'm 99% sure is going to be nominated, Rich Osmond We Solve Murders. Okay, this is like the number one book I want to read in the world, but also I'm, the more I leave it, the more scared I'm getting, <laughs> but this is the start of Rich Osmond's new series. We're following a father-in-law and daughter-in-law duo, and it's a bit more like Jet Setty, but it's them solving mysteries around the world, and again, I've heard mixed things, well not mixed things, I've heard some people giving it four stars. So I I am going into this with the expectation of four stars. I'm really trying to temper my expectations because I could go into this with like five star plus, like 10 star expectations because that's what the series Thursday Murder Club is to me. And so I'm trying to temper those expectations and be okay with whatever happens <laughs> and how much I enjoy this book. But I'm so excited. I just love, I love how Rich Osmond does people and humanity and human nature. And I just can't wait to read, I mean, another book of his. He's just the best author to ever exist, in my opinion. <laughs> Next question. Is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? Absolutely. Because I don't think I've had many books that are in, I haven't had a great reading year. When I think of my five stars, I mean, let me talk to you about it now. My five stars that I've had this year, how many have I had? I've had 14 five stars out of 106 books, but I would say a lot of those are like just five stars, you know? Like five stars of the year, but like not even thinking a lot of them would make it into my top 10 of the year. My favorite book I've read this year is Pride and Prejudice. My favorite book I've read this year is Pride and Prejudice. Absolutely, okay? My favorite book I've read this year is Pride and Prejudice. I would say, other books for me that feel like they could be in top 10 are Reach for the Stars, The Warm Hands of Ghosts, Love Theoretically, Shark Heart. Um, 
maybe Queen Bee? But yeah, I, I still think something could shock me and be my favourite book of the year. I think it could be something in that Goodreads video, whether that being Rich Osman, or I think I'm really gonna enjoy First Lie Wins. I've heard really good things about that one. I think something could shock me in that one. Like some of my favourite books have come from that video and ones that surprise me, like Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jenny McAllister. I don't think I ever would have read that were it not if I hadn't done the Goodreads Choice Wars video. I don't know if there's any books. Rich Osman's the only one I can say with certainty could be my favorite book of the year. Everything else is really just a risk at this point. I really don't know what to... I, I just feel like I've had such a strange reading year and life year that I'm just kind of like, whatever happens, happens. Let's hope for the best <laughs> and hope that I get a few more great books because I feel like I deserve it. And the final question is, have you already started making reading plans for next year? Yes. I haven't made set plans. I mean, I've like planned out vlogs for like January and into February, but they're kind of just rejects that I was hoping to do this year that I haven't got around to. So in January, I'm really excited. I'm going to do again, like reading the first chapter challenge of a selection of books I think could be five star, trying to get a five star star for the start of the year I'll do that I'm gonna read probably all the Goodreads winners which I did for the first time this year and I really enjoyed I really I really liked seeing what I'd won and reading them and I ended up having already read quite a few of them last year so I didn't have that many to read but I may have more to read I don't think I've read many 2024 releases this year so I think I may end up doing that oh, I don't want to read Romanticy what Romanticy is gonna win this year guys now they've got this fucking Romanticy category you know what I mean what is gonna win what Romanticy is big can someone tell me? What, what's gonna win? You have no fucking clue. You have no fucking idea. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the Goodreads Choice Awards, guys. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so excited. Anyways, let's not talk. I just, it just is Christmas. It's Christmas. I haven't planned out, like this year I had Year of Rex as like my big overall year kind of project. I don't know if I'm gonna do that next year. I think I just wanna read and I just wanna read books on my TBR. I've had a lot of videos this year because of Year of Rex where like they're giving me random recommendations from their favorite books and none, barely any of them have been on my TBR. So um, I think I really just want to try and read my TBR down. Maybe that'll be my big goal next year is to get my physical TBR under a certain number because it's bad at the moment. <laughs> it's getting out of hand and I feel like I don't like that. I feel like I don't like having such a big number on my TBR. So if anyone has any video ideas that could help me read down my TBR, that'd be very welcome. Because sometimes I struggle with that. Sometimes my favorite concepts are ones that are not on my TBR. So anyways, that's my answer to that question and that's the end of the end of year book tag. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your answers to any of these questions. Let me know how you're doing on your reading goal. I'm sure many of you are doing better than I am because I just set too lofty a goal. I set too high, high a hope. <laughs> but yeah, let me know how your reading has gone and how you're hoping it'll go in the last couple of months. I'm gonna send us all good vibes. I think we all deserve immaculate vibes for the end of October, November, December. We're going to have a great couple months. I deserve a great couple months. We all deserve a great couple months. Hopefully life is going to be good. I love you all so much. I love you more than life itself. And um, I'll see you soon in another video. Bye.